Hi everyone. Uh, I thought I'll spend one more lecture on a few intuitions in source degenerated uh, common source amplifiers. Okay, so you can treat this as like some exercise problems on um, single stage amplifiers. So in this lecture, I'll take you through. Uh, you know, I've already discussed what happens uh, when I source degenerate a MOSFET, and in the presence of R naught, how does the gain change? Then we will analyze different cases of, uh, you know, making the load resistance go to infinity. In the other case, we'll make the source resistance go to infinity. We'll open circuit the source. And later, we'll see how to analyze all these problems intuitively. I'll try and not use any equations, just by intuitions if we can guess the output. So that's what uh, will be the goal of uh, this lecture. And we'll make load and source resistance equal and see what happens to the output voltage and just to re, uh, just to remind you again that I'll be discussing about the output voltage and what happens to the source voltage. These are the two voltages I'll be interested in. Okay. And uh, finally, I'll talk about a case where I'm going to make both the resistors blow up to infinity and uh, we'll see what happens to the, uh, the drain and the source voltages in this case. Okay. So I'll start with the simple problem where we have a finite load resistance and a source resistance in the presence of R0. Okay, so some very quick simple facts about this circuit. So we already derived expressions for the output voltage and the source voltage. So just to quickly write this, so if you recall from the previous lecture, this output, the drain voltage will be GMR0 into RL by RL plus R out. We saw how to derive this intuitively. Okay, this is the expression for the output voltage in times Vi, of course, and this was your output voltage. The source voltage, on the other hand, was actually you have to divide this by RL and multiply it by the resistance here. So that, so another point that you have to keep in mind is that the current flowing through the load resistor and the current flowing through the resistance, the source degenerated resistance R are exactly the same. So that's what I said, the current is fully fed back. It's a feedback network which takes in the entire current that's flowing through R, RL. So if your current ID or the I0 is the output current flowing through RL, the same current flows through R as well. So an interesting fact is that your source potential, so uh, your uh, source potential Vs will be equal to I0 into R because the direction of flow is in this way. And so this source will be uh, positive compared to this node, which is the AC ground. And the drain voltage will be minus of I0 into RL. So a very interesting fact comes about from this. So you get the ratio of the drain to source voltage is simply minus of RL by R. Okay. So this is uh, independent of the MOS, I mean, MOS characteristics. Uh, okay. And this is true for any circuit. I mean, for any load resistance and source resistance that you connect to the circuit, this relationship is always true. It's always valid. Now, uh, the source voltage, the source voltage is a fraction of it, a fraction of the input appears across the source voltage. And we discussed in the last class, what does that, I mean, last few lectures when we discussed about source degenerated uh, common source amplifiers. Okay. We said that if the MOSFET has an infinite GM, the GM of the MOSFET is infinity, then what we would get is your source voltage entirely being equal to the input voltage. So we discussed how does this happen. We discussed the uh, in the absence of R naught, uh, we drew a small signal um, a block diagram equivalent for this circuit. So this was GM, and I, I drew a feedback part, which was R. Okay. So if you make this GM as infinity, if you make the GM as infinity, so you should keep in mind if your output voltage is finite, then the output current is I naught is finite. Okay. The output current I naught is finite. So for you to have a finite output current, so this is the finite output current that is going to flow. If your GM is infinity, then the voltage seen by the MOSFET, in this case, the error voltage here, this is VE, that error voltage is actually equal to VGS for this circuit. That should be equal to zero because I0 is finite. So anything, if you're going to multiply something with infinity, the quantity should be negligibly small for you to get a finite output. Because anything you, if, if the input error voltage is finite, if you multiply that with infinity, you're going to get infinity. But for I0 to be finite, the input has to be zero. 
Okay, so this is forced by the feedback. You know, this is something that is enforced by feedback. So if your GM is infinity, then from this you can very easily see that the error voltage is zero, then the voltage across the resistor, so this point is the voltage across the resistor, so which is Vs, your Vs will be equal to Vi. Okay, the entire voltage is going to appear across the resistor. Okay, and that should also make intuitive sense because if your GM is infinity, then Vgs has to be negligibly small because your GM Vgs is the drain current and uh, for your drain current to be finite, Vgs has to be almost zero because your uh, GM into Vgs is your drain current. Okay, so if your GM goes to infinity, then Vgs goes to zero. So that's what uh, we discussed. So if I ensure your Vs is completely equal to Vi, then this ratio Vds, Vd by Vs or V in, I can write it as V0 by Vs will approximately be equal to V0 by Vi itself. Okay. And we derived these approximations in the last, uh, in, in the previous lectures. Okay. So the important point to note here is that the drain voltage to the drain to source voltage, the ratio, it's actually the uh, the ratio of the load resistance to the source resistance connected here okay so now we'll uh, again i'm not writing the exact expressions we have already derived those exact expressions so if you know this is the voltage across the drain so that is the drain with respect to ground uh, the voltage of drain with respect to ground ac ground then the source voltage is simply going to be i can simply use this result and say that it's going to be plus gmr naught into R by RL plus R out. So that's going to times Vi. This is going to be your source voltage. Okay. Now we will analyze some limiting cases. What happens when I make the load resistance go to infinity? And uh, what happens when I make the source resistance go to infinity and so on? So when I make the load resistance go to infinity, this is something we have analyzed in the previous lecture as well. Uh, or, sorry. So this is R. If I make the load resistance go to infinity, what it means is that for a finite input, the output current is now zero. Okay. Since the output current is zero, there is no current which is being fed back. Okay. So the voltage across this, uh, the degenerating resistance Vs is going to be equal to zero. Okay. Since there is no feedback, there, there is no so. I mean, you, the circuit will behave as though there is no source degeneration at all to begin with in the first place. Okay, so you can see that you know your VI is applied to the system and you have forward path, you have a transconductance GM and uh, this is your feedback V source voltage. Now the current input to the system is actually zero, I0 is zero, so this VS is also going to be zero. Okay, and we analyzed intuitively, we said that if your drain current, the output current cannot change, okay, because it's an open circuit, then uh, the voltage across this resistor also cannot change, which means this node will come to AC ground. Okay, so I'll just make some, uh, in fact, I've used the word AC ground, so I'm just going to stress upon that point a little bit. So the circuit will simply reduce to something like this, and the gain was simply minus GMR naught. So your V naught, the, dra the drain voltage was simply minus GMR naught times VI. Okay, and this should make sense because your source voltage now is actually zero. Your source voltage is zero because if you re recall your uh, output to source voltage, your drain to source voltage was actually proportional to RL upon the source, the resistance you connected at the source. If your RL is infinity and V0 is finite, then your Vs will tend to zero from this, from that directly follows from this equation itself. Okay, if I've open circuited the drain, the, which means the load resistance is, is infinity, then if V0 is finite, the source resistance, source voltage has to be uh, zero because your RL is infinity. So this condition always has to be satisfied. Okay, so uh, that's what we get from this circuit. And uh, I'll just talk about this point AC ground. So this ground, the word ground is often overused, but you should actually, there is a subtle difference between the different grounds. The word uh, ground might refer to different things in different circuits. So for example, Let's say I have a DC voltage source connecting a resistor and uh, another resistor like this. And okay, so now what happens is that let's say I have some AC voltage source connected here. So this is say Vx is the AC voltage source connected here. 
and this is a DC voltage source. Now when I draw the AC equivalent circuit, I am going to assume that this node voltage will not have any AC variations. Okay, So therefore I am going to say that as far as AC is concerned, it is always at a fixed voltage, so I am going to call it ground. But here, there is some current flowing into the ground, but since it is a DC voltage, even though there is some AC current flowing in it, this node voltage is not going to change. So therefore, we will call it AC ground. So in this, by this definition, I can say a ground is a point which can sink infinite current. Infinite amount of huge amounts of current can flow into it, but this voltage will never change. It will always remain fixed at its at a certain voltage. Okay. Or if this Vs is negative, then it can even source current. The node current can flow out of this ground as well. Okay. Still, the voltage will always remain fixed. So that's one definition of ground. The other definition of ground is the standard reference point of any circuit. So let's say I give a circuit like this R, R and V i. And uh, so then if I ask you to find what is the voltage at this point, you can't define voltage at one point at a node. So this is called a node. We can't define voltage at a single node. You have to give me voltage is always it's a potential difference is always defined between two points. That's why it's difference between potential of two points. Okay, it's defined with respect to something. So that reference point is what we call as ground. So if I if I define this as a reference point, then this node voltage will be equal to Vi by 2. Okay, uh, again, you can go through my previous lectures on the passive circuits. So where we talk a little bit about the ground in the initial lectures. So I can define ground, definition of ground is arbitrary. When in this, by this definition, a ground is like a reference point. A ground is more like a reference point. Okay. It's more like a reference point with respect to which we measure every other voltage in the circuit. Okay. Now the third definition of ground is what we are we are interested in here. So that when I uh, drew a circuit like this, I said that the source voltage is AC ground. Okay. So R naught is like this. So as soon as I apply V i here, there is this node voltage is at AC ground. So this V G S of this MOSFET is going to be V i. So what will happen is that you will have a current GMVI flowing in this MOSFET. You will have a current GMVI flowing in this MOSFET and uh, since this is at ground, this node voltage will be at minus GM R naught into VI. Okay. So this is a negative voltage. So your current MOSFET will carry current in this direction, R naught will carry current in this direction. Okay. Now you have to note a very interesting point here. Even though this is the ground, there is no current flowing into this node. Okay, the current flowing in this node is zero. So this is actually by the definition of this node, it being a ground, is entirely because its voltage not changing at all. So it's more like we can refer to this more like a virtual ground. It comes to an AC virtual ground. Okay, we will again encounter virtual ground, a similar virtual ground idea in a later in another problem in this lecture. So uh, that's why I just wanted to introduce that right now. Okay, so now see this doesn't uh, obey both the definitions. I mean, it's not taking in or taking out any current. I mean, there is no current flowing in this node, but still, this node voltage is always fixed. This node voltage is never changing. Okay, now because of that, we are going to call it as an AC ground. Okay, there is no current. I mean, if any current flows through that, this voltage will change. Okay, but because of the certain nature, I mean, the circuit's behavior that it no current is flowing through this node, therefore, this node voltage remains fixed. And therefore, we are calling that as an AC ground. Okay, it's more like a virtual ground. There is no real current flowing into that uh, node. Okay, the current path will be like this. The current path will loop in this device like this. Okay, so no current will flow through the ground terminal. Now, similarly, the other circuit of interest is when we try and open circuit. What happens? Let's now open circuit. This is R naught here. See, I am explicitly showing R naught in a MOSFET just to show that I am modeling R naught here. It's not the extra parallel resistor that I am adding to the MOSFET. Okay. When I am drawing R naught here, intuitively I am trying to show that okay, I am including the lambda effect. You know, I have that channel channel length modulation is considered in this problem. Now, in this case, we'll open circuit the source resistance, and we will find what is the voltage, the output voltage, the drain and the source voltages. Now the same thing holds here. The moment you make the source resistance infinity, 
the current flowing through this has to be zero because you, there is no impedance or path for this current to flow if this current is zero then the current through the load resistance is also zero so therefore in this problem the load this drain node voltage will go to zero that that will be your virtual ac ground okay i am just using the word virtual to just distinguish between the other two kinds of grounds the other ground is a ground where infinite current can flow and still its voltage will remain the same this is the definition of that ground where it was a voltage source uh, at that point the dc there was a dc voltage source because of which there is no ac variations okay then the other ground is a reference point with with with, rest, with respect to which we measure the voltages in a circuit that's the other definition of ground we discussed now this is a ground it is ground because the node voltage is not changing by some some properties of the circuit is ensuring that this node voltage here is not changing so therefore we are going to call that as a virtual ground or an ac ground here ac virtual ground okay so your i not is zero so therefore your output voltage is simply going to be equal to zero okay now how do we analyze analyze circuit what happens to the source voltage now if you see this circuit so uh, let's say this is ground this is i mean uh, it is ground we have seen that this node is old. this node is at zero volts okay now if i assume that let's say for example vs is also zero i mean i'm just trying to show that it can't be zero if vs is zero what it means is that the current through r not is zero right because the voltage across both the terminals is zero so voltage potential drop across r not is zero so there is no current through r not but if this ground is this is at ac ground this is at zero volts the valve the potential at that node is zero volts then there will be a finite gmvi current flowing through this device okay and it has no other path i mean the only other possibility for this to current to be zero is vi itself is zero okay for a finite zero zero for a finite vi this term gmvi cannot be zero okay so which means uh, i am again going to violate kcl's here so we can intuitively say that vs cannot be zero okay so we have to find what is the value of vs so i can very easily redraw the circuit and show it like this or not here again drain is ground at ac ground so this structure actually reduces to a common drain amplifier okay this structure actually reduces to a common drain amplifier and we know the gain of a common drain amplifier is simply gm or not by 1 plus gm or not and we already spent some time on as to how to derive this result intuitively okay so that's the voltage at this point okay so i mean uh, this is very trivially proven if r not is infinity if r not is infinity vs will simply be equal to vi again this is a problem that we had already discussed so let's say we had a finite load resistance and if r not was infinity and uh, if your source resistance was made to go to infinity sorry um, source resistance is also infinity then your source voltage will simply follow vi it will be a voltage follower circuit and this will be at ac ground okay but now because of the presence of r not there is a finite current in the mos device okay now here this should you shouldn't confuse here the there is no current flowing into the ground in this device into the ac ground it's actually a current just looping through the mosfet and r not it's the current looping around like this in the ac model so this is r not so this is vi and this node voltage will be some alpha times vi which will generate a current in this mosfet and that will loop around this device and this node is here at ac ground and no current flows through this node okay so this node is almost like a virtual ground okay i'm just using the word virtual ground by virtue of it, this circuit's uh, behavior it's coming to a zero volts or zero variations in that node in 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 operational amplifiers uh, operational amplifier circuits by virtue of feedback sometimes you know you will have some nodes without any voltage changes so the, again the word virtual ground is used there as well okay to distinguish it from the normal definitions of grounds okay so uh, that's it about this problem so now you can see that your source voltage in this case is approximately equal to vi or i can write to derive the exact value is gm or not by 1 plus gm or not into vi and the drain voltage which is your output voltage is simply zero in this case again you can use the same condition v drain by vs should be equal to minus of rl by rs if rs is infinity 
if Rs is infinity and Rl is finite and Vs is finite, then V0 will be equal to 0. You can see that from this equation. Okay. So, or to understand it from negative feedback point of view, you have a situation like this. So, the forward path is your MOSFET, with which, which is like, uh, I can call this as an open loop model. So, for example, if I had a MOS device like this, where the VI appearing entirely across the VGS, versus a source degenerated model, source degenerated MOSFET, okay. So, I am going to call this as the open loop, which is represented here. In the presence of source degeneration, that this is like your VGS of the MOSFET, that is going to reduce, okay. And what happens when I make R as infinity? So, in the previous problem, one, one of the previous problems I discussed what happens when GM is infinity, we said uh, the transconductance of this circuit becomes 1 by R, okay. Now, if R is infinity, if R is infinity, so this is a feedback system so of this form A by 1 plus A beta, beta is your R here, A is GM here. If your loop gain is infinity, if A beta tends to infinity, then we know for any feedback system, this term approaches 1 by beta, okay. So, similarly, GM can be finite, but since R becomes infinity here, the product of GM into R is infinity, so loop gain is infinity. So, the ratio of GM by 1 plus GM R becomes 0, okay. Again, you can see the feedback is so high that the feedback gain is, if the feedback gain is very high, again, the forward path output is going to be 0, okay. So, you can see this is other way of looking at the circuit using feedback. Now, the third part, we will come to the case where you have equal resistors. So, I have R0 here. I am considering the cases where there is a finite R0. So, what happens to the output voltage or the drain voltage and the source voltage? Now, in this problem, again, we will use the same fact that the current flowing through this resistor and this resistor are same. So, your I0 is same. So, you can very easily say here that your V0 will simply be equal to minus of Vs because your same current is flowing through both the resistors. So, V0 will simply be equal to minus of Vs. So, if you recall in one of the previous lectures, we said this circuit was a phase splitter. It can generate two signals of uh, div one, which are 180 degrees apart, okay. It can generate two signals with a phase shift of 180 degrees apart. Now, we will try to analyze this circuit as well using intuitions. If I again, we already know uh, to write, if I ask you to write the exact expressions, of course, you can use the expressions we have derived. It will be the minus GMR naught being the open loop gain times RL by RL plus R out. You can use that expression and uh, you will you'll, you'll simply get R by R. Okay. So, again, uh, you can just expand this term. So, expand this term and you will get some, you can actually get some simplified expressions. So, I am not interested in that right now. Okay. We know how to do that, you know, that is the point. Now, what happens here, we will try to solve this problem intuitively. Is there any way of simplifying this circuit further? Now, if you look at this node, if let us say this is uh, V0, I will write the source potential as minus V0 because this, this obeys this condition, your V0 is equal to minus of Vs. So, your Vs will be equal to minus V0. Now, I will invoke the definition of virtual ground again. Now, let us say we have an impedance Z by 2 and Z by 2 like this and uh, this node is open and I am applying a voltage a delta V here and a minus delta V here. Okay. If I apply a voltage delta V and minus delta V, there is no path for current through this node. There is no path for the current, there is path for current is 0. So, the entire current has to flow through this. So, the current flowing through this node to this element will be delta V into whatever this node voltage is by Z by 2. And this current is going to be again flowing in this direction is going to be uh, some Vx. I am going to call this node voltage as Vx plus delta V by Z by 2. So, you will get delta V minus Vx by Z by 2. Now, for these two to be equal, the only possible solution is Vx is 0, okay. Again, you can solve this problem many ways. You can use uh, superposition 
you can apply only this is present and find this voltage it will come to plus delta v by 2 and you can assume only this is present and fire and assume this is 0 and find this voltage you will get minus delta v by 2 add the two you are going to get 0 okay so that node because of the symmetrical nature of this circuit this node is going to be at ac ground okay so in fact I, it doesn't matter whether you have connected a dc voltage source here or a current source or ac current source okay if if it doesn't matter whether you have connected an ac current source or a dc voltage source there if it's a dc voltage source then this node is going to be ac ground by default i mean by it's it's, it's it is going to be def ac ground but now if it's a current source here ac current a, a dc current source you have connected here this potential can assume any voltage that this circuit lets it settle to you know the circuit the, the, the circuit this circuit is going to let it settle to actually it comes to the same voltage it will come to ac ground now in this circuit even though there is a dc voltage source here this node voltage will be an ac ground by virtue of this symmetry in the circuit so again i'm going to use that call that as an ac ground so if let's say i have a some as an impedance with a voltage delta v and minus delta v appearing across this i can simply split this impedance z into two parts okay and then i can find there is some point in between the voltage being zero so i'll call this as the ac ground it's almost like a virtual ground it is like a virtual ground there is no current flowing through that node but still that voltage is uh, you know always at ac ground well, the, the voltage the ac voltage there does not change at all okay so there will be some point in between if i split this into two whose voltage is going to be zero and i'm going to assume that as ac ground so this circuit when we terminate the resistor the uh, a common source amplifier with both drain and source resistors equal drain and source resistors of value r it's going to come to a similar situation so this is going to be v naught and this is going to be uh, sorry minus v naught and this is going to be plus v naught so to analyze this problem i can simply divide this r naught into two halves so i can i'll just redraw that part i'll just exaggerate the mosfet part so i'll split this as r naught by 2 and r naught by 2 and this node is going to be ac ground okay and this will be r and r here okay so again this circuit can further be simplified to r parallel r naught by 2 and uh, r parallel r naught by 2 okay so this is our standard circuit without r naught this is the mosfet model without r naught so we know how to solve that problem okay so we have reduced it to a very very simple and well known expression your effective transconductance now reduces by gm by 1 plus gm r it's going to be gm by 1 plus gm into r parallel ro by 2 that's your effective transconductance that times r parallel ro by 2 is going to be the output voltage or the gain for the circuit so if this is v naught this will be the gain or the output voltage is simply going to be this terms vi and the source voltage here on the other hand the source voltage is just going to be the one with, with a positive sign you know the same voltage but with a positive sign so it will be gm into r not r parallel r o by 2 r naught by 2 by 1 plus gm into r parallel r naught by 2 okay so this way we can reduce this analysis of circuit and make it pretty simple okay uh, we can directly analyze the circuit using such uh, intuitions the final circuit uh, again i haven't written the exact expression of how to derive this exact expression for gain uh, we have already discussed it's going to be minus gm r naught into rl by r you know this expression minus gm r naught into rl by rl plus r out so if you substitute the values of rl as r and expressions for r out you will get the same expression here okay so but this is more a simpler way of deriving the same result now the final case is a case where we are going to make both the drain and the source resistance go to zero both of them sorry both the drain and source resistance to blow up to infinity okay so we are now going to make 
both RL, RS as infinity, I mean I've assumed both of them to be same and I kept on increasing R and eventually it became infinity. So this will be your V0 and this will be your Vs and uh, we know that Vs is simply minus V0. Okay, the analysis still remains the same. I, I just kept on increasing, it is independent of the value of uh, R and R. If the same, if you, if you terminate the source and drain with the same resistors, this condition is always valid. Now, to analyze this circuit, I can very easily reduce this to RO by 2, RO by 2 and an AC ground in between. So, this is going to be RO by 2, RO by 2 and uh, AC ground in between and this is your VI. So, the circuit will reduce to something like this. In the limiting case, when both the drain and source resistances blow up to infinity, it will reduce to something like this. Now, your drain and source voltages can be very easily derived. So, this is going to see uh, here R0 is no, no longer there. I have included, I have absorbed R0 into the load and source resistance. Okay. So, this is just a MOSFET with, uh, you know, no channel link modulation effect. You know, that is actually captured in R0. So, we know that the effective transconductance is going to be GM by 1 plus GM R0 by 2. So, it is going to be 2 plus GM R0 into 2. So, this is going to be your effective GM. I will call it GF, the effective GM of the circuit. That times R0 by 2 is the source, is the drain voltage with the minus sign. So, you will get minus GM R0 by 2 plus GM R0 times VI will be your uh, drain voltage or output voltage. And the source voltage is going to be plus GM R0 by 2 plus GM R0 times VI. If R0 tends to infinity, if R0 tends to infinity, then in that case, okay, if R0 tends to infinity, we can see that this result will become minus VI and this will approach plus VI. Okay. So, it will be a perfect phase splitter circuit. It will give you a perfect, it will generate a differential, perfectly differential output. Okay. So, uh, that is it about the this lecture. So, we just, I just wanted to cover one lecture to analyze um, source in a degenerated MOS circuits in a more intuitive way. Okay. So, uh, these are, uh, this, this is a more interesting way of analyzing circuit if you use the symmetry properties and uh, idea of virtual grounds. So, even though I have drawn, uh, that is what I, I stressed upon the fact virtual ground because I have shown this as ground here. Okay. And I treated this circuit as though there is a current flowing from, there is a current. Okay. I have treated this circuit as though there is a current flowing in this path and uh, here as well. Okay. So, now if you recall from a normal circuit, what happens is you will have a supply at this node and you will have a real ground, AC ground at this node, I mean DC ground as well at this node. So, you will have a current flowing like this, AC current flowing like this. But in this circuit, that is not the case. There is no current flowing in the ground at all. A ground is purely uh, a virtual ground. We used it for analysis, simplicity of analysis. The current actually loops around. There no current flows into the ground. Nothing flows into the ground. Okay. It just loops around. Okay, uh, so that is it about uh, this lecture. I think I probably if I have a few more problems, I will discuss uh, single stage amplifiers or I will directly move on to uh, multi stage. So these are all single ended amplifiers. So, multi stage single ended amplifiers. So, that will be probably be the next uh, topic of the next few lectures.